Well, if you are looking to get those Christmas presents in time, you may want to start looking now. Yes, more than two months out from the holiday season. Logistics companies, including UPS, have put out a warning saying that low vaccination rates, COVID-19 infections, worker shortages can all lead to big shipment delays extending into 2022. Let's bring in the CEO of the world's largest logistics services provider, Frank Appel, Deutsche Post DHL Group CEO, joining us today alongside Yahoo Finance's Brian Sazi. Uh, Frank, it's good to talk to you today. Uh, give me a sense of the outlook right now as you look into the busy holiday season. What kind of potential delays um, can DHL customers expect? Yeah, so it's a little bit difficult to project final dates um, uh, right now, but but it's true is that we have uh, constraints with capacity. You know, the, the ports are congested uh, in the U.S., and, and that leads to delays on unloading uh, vessels. The hinterland transportation is also quite tight as well. Uh, there is a labor shortage. Hopefully, uh, that will change, um, you know, after the subsidies are now over a little bit in the next weeks. But it's probably the most unpredictable season we have ever seen. Um, and because we, the demand surged so rapidly, and of course, there are imbalances in trade, and that has led to the situation we have in. So what the final last day for really ordering stuff might be, you know, I think that's too early to judge. Frank, what steps is DHL taking to alleviate the supply chain pressures? Yeah, of course, you know, being a global company, we are using, of course, our purchase power to help our customers as much as possible. We are hiring people. You know, we we want to be seen by our employees as a great place to work, and, and that helps us, um, we believe, also to get more people on board and other than some of our competitors. But, you know, we can't change the world. You know, we can't change the tremendous increase in demand. We can't change that there are not more vessels available at the moment. We can't change that we have congestion in, in ports in particular. So what we can do is that we can leverage our own capabilities to the best extent and help customers uh, to get the stuff moving. And what I heard, I had a meeting two days ago with customers, and what I heard is that they appreciate really what we are doing for them that we really pulled up the sleeves and do our utmost to help them to get things moving. Of course, prices are very high at the moment for an ocean freight, but you know, I think we have demonstrated our global capabilities and capabilities, and that's of course a sign of strength we have as an organization, being the most global logistics company. So, but beyond that, there are limitations for all of us somehow. Uh, it is an abnormal situation, as I said, we have never experienced before. No, not a lot of people have experience in what a pandemic looks like here, certainly not the one that we've seen in the scale or duration of what we've been going through. But you guys have been hiring more, as you talked about there, 800 holiday employees, uh, 2,000 more. We've heard from some of your uh, shipping competitors here, as Sazi's highlighted on Yahoo Finance in his interviews, costs going up when it comes to hiring those workers. So, so what should maybe uh, investors expect when it comes to the way DHL might have to shell out a bit more to bring that labor on board? Yeah, I think this is our job to manage that somehow. And it's always linked between, you know, the cost we have and of course, you know, the, the pricing we have. I think we have done that uh, pretty well, um, you know, in, in the last quarters because we have seen already a tightness of the labor market for some quarters. I think that's the job of good management. And if I look into our first half year results, we had record growth, we had record uh, profits. Uh, and that is what I expect from the organization. I tell them, listen, don't tell me your problems, tell me your solutions. And I think the, the management around the world has done a great job, really, I think, managing the situation, uh, despite that we have seen tight labor markets, not only in the U.S. Frank, how are you approaching the issue of uh, vaccinations for workers? Uh, obviously, the, the vaccination rates are higher in the U.S. in Europe, but you've got a global operation in place. We've seen uh, places like China, the ports there shut down because of COVID outbreaks. H how do you approach that to keep things running during the busiest season in terms of mandates and restrictions? Yeah, so, so first of all, of course, we follow everywhere in the world, um, you know, the government ruling. So if, if governments are demanding certain things from us, we follow. But what we have done through the pandemic is 
We have really scaled up our protection for our people. We have seen that this works very well. The feedback from our colleagues is great. They really feel health and safe, healthy and safe in our operations. And that, I think, is the first thing. You know, the vaccination, we constantly, you know, tell people that this is a great idea. You know, I'm vaccinated already now for months. And, and you know, I tell everybody, go for the vaccination. If you have concerns, go to your doctor and ask them. Actually, we have seen in some countries we are operating uh, a higher uh, pickup even than in some of the developed countries. I have talked to country management, 100% of the people were on a voluntary basis vaccinated because they believe that this is a great idea um, uh, and it protects them in their day-to-day -day job. So I can only be an advocate and say everybody, and there is overwhelming evidence that this is good. You know, Being myself a chemist and neurobiologist from education, I understand how these vaccines are working pretty well, and I can only recommend to everybody, if you are not vaccinated yet, please go out. It is the best way how you can protect yourself, your family members, and your friends. Frank, uh, we are coming up against the holiday season, and we have a lot of consumers, a lot of people watching us. What's your advice to them? When, when should they start their holiday shopping, given all the challenges we're seeing out there? You know, I always said that in the past, the earlier, the better, uh, because, you know, we love more a balanced network instead of having a tremendous peak. And we have seen that in the last years that in November, many people start already buying in November. The key issue is somehow what the e-tailers and retailers will say. If you can still return uh, the product, even if you have bought in October, probably consumers will do that because very often they know already what they want to buy. And, and say, okay, then I have it already at, at, at place. That is good for the networks anyway, if we have more equal distribution, instead of having very tight two weeks of tight uh, volumes and, and capacity. So that's a good advice anyway. But of course, it's linked to what retailers and e-tailers are saying. If, if they say, you know, you can send that product only back in a certain time frame, which is short, and of course, people will only buy online because they don't know if their gift is appreciated by, by whoever is uh, the receiver of your gift. So I think that's an element where actually our customers, our B2B customers can help us a lot by relaxing that and say, okay, we give you the opportunity to send products even back after a longer period because that would normalize that. To finally give a recommendation is very difficult because it's different by product type you know, whatever you buy is, is not equally constrained. Some of the stuff will be flown in anyway due to the high value of the product. So it's, it's very difficult to give a general role. The general role is if you are clear what you want to buy, go out and buy that. I'm not sure if that market price will be lower, you know, uh, later this year before Christmas. So, but th that's an individual choice at the end of the day. But for logistics, of course, it would make our life much easier if we have a more balanced uh, load over over several weeks instead of just have a very tight uh, peak period. Yeah, echoing the sentiments of the Port of LA director earlier, who also talked about the getting your orders in early. Frank Appel, uh, Deutsche Post DHL Group CEO, it's great to have you on today. And our thanks to Brian Sazi as well for joining in on the conversation.